Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor. Let me make sure my mic is all situated. Maybe I'll move it over here. Um, if you're not new here, then this is definitely not gonna be my usual content. Usually I make home stuff, DIYs, I don't know, just like fun homemaking type content, whatever. It's just, my channel's just meant to be fun. This video is not gonna be fun. I am going to tell you about my experience having something called a D and C, which stands for dilation and curatage or curatage. I don't really know. I had a DNC a little over a month ago at this point because I had what's called a missed miscarriage at 11 weeks and two days. I don't really know where to begin. I'm, I guess I'm just gonna try and keep this video as informative as possible. And the reason I wanna make a video on this is because I feel like it would be therapeutic for me to talk about it. And I know that when I realized I was gonna have to have this procedure done or even when I realized I was miscarrying again I was combing the internet and combing YouTube specifically just trying to find videos about people talking about their experience on this so I'm gonna tell you mine I hope it's helpful for you um <laughs> My husband gave me permission to record this video. If anybody's concerned about that, he doesn't mind that I'm gonna put this out there because I really want to talk about it. I think the thing with miscarriage is usually, at least in my culture in the United States, you're supposed to keep the fact that you're pregnant a secret until you are 12 weeks along because Typically, once you make it out of the first trimester, the chances of you miscarrying your child is super low. They actually say that at your first appointment, once they hear a heartbeat, the chances of miscarriage are 5%. I did hear a heartbeat at my first appointment. So anyway, I am 28 years old. I have a 15 month old already. He's napping upstairs right now, so I gotta try and do this quickly. I had him via C-section two weeks early, and this December, when he was about five months old, we decided to try and start getting pregnant one more time. We only want two children, so in January, we start trying again, and it took a few months, and we were like, dang. But then in April, on April 9th, I got a positive pregnancy test and it continued to get darker for several days after that. If you're not aware, or if you don't know about the trying to conceive community online, people talk a lot about testing for several days in a row and making sure that the test line on your pregnancy test is getting darker because that indicates that your HCG levels are rising appropriately and mine were. Unfortunately, I ended up miscarrying that pregnancy I think exactly two weeks after that. And I went to the ER, they told me there's nothing that can be done. I have O negative blood, so I was given a Rogam shot. Rogam is something that you'll get in pregnancy at about 27 weeks if you have RH negative blood because your blood can start to reject the pregnancy if your child is developing a blood type that isn't the same as yours. At least that's how I understand it. So I got a Rogam shot at 27 weeks. You can't know until the baby's born if your baby's gonna have O negative blood also. That was a big bummer, but we only knew that I was pregnant for two weeks. So honestly, it was a bummer, but I didn't even cry over it. I just was like, Damn. So that happened end of April. I think it was about six weeks before I got my period again. And then we got pregnant again in my June cycle. And I found out I was pregnant again on July 9th. And we were cautiously optimistic about that because as we discovered with the previous one that just cause you get pregnant doesn't mean you're gonna carry it to term, which I knew. I think I found out like right about four weeks and then two weeks after that, I started getting sick. So I got super sick, started getting exhausted, started needing to nap during the day. My face started breaking out. I had cravings, I had aversions, I had the whole shebang, which again, in the trying to conceive community, that's a good thing. You want to know that your symptoms are ramping up because it means your hormones are changing appropriately, even though it sucks. But your symptoms aren't always indicative of how the pregnancy is going. You just don't know. You're in a limbo stage until you kind of get out of the woods after the first trimester and you realize that the chances of something bad happening are really low. So because I have 
O negative blood type, I've had a prior loss and I've had a C-section. All of those things kind of put me at a higher risk category. I emailed my doctor when I was about six weeks and I asked her to get my betas done. Getting your betas done is just getting a series of three blood draws and then they check to see if your HCG is rising appropriately. And you get them, I think, every other day, three sessions. So all within like a week. And um, mine were rising appropriately. And early on, you want to see your HCG double each draw. And mine was. So that was really reassuring. My husband and I started getting really excited. And then I asked her for an early ultrasound because I was a little paranoid and I wanted to just make sure that the baby looked okay and it had a heartbeat. So went in, got an early ultrasound. Everything seemed fine. She didn't see anything indicative of something that I should worry about. So again, my husband and I were really excited about that. Started getting our hopes up even more. We even started thinking about names or saying things like when this baby gets here, blah, blah, blah. We we're really hopeful in building it up. Couple more weeks go by, I'm more nauseous. So yeah, symptoms continue to kind of ramp up a little bit. And then around week 10, they went away, which didn't seem weird to me because with my son, my symptoms also went away at around that point. He ended up being a healthy pregnancy that I carried to term and delivered. So, you know, I wasn't worried. I was like, we're having this baby in March. March 2023 is when I was supposed to have this baby. One morning I brought my son to a uh, story time and while there I felt a gush of something. And this is gonna be too much information for a lot of people. So if you're grossed out about this, I'm sorry, but it's just the female body. Um, lots of people know what discharge is. I thought it was discharge because when you're pregnant, your discharge ramps up like crazy and you have to like wear panty liners every day and it's just, it's just a whole thing. So I didn't think anything of it. We just continued on with story time and I didn't go to the bathroom and check to see what it was. And then on the way home from story time, I was like, you know, instead of going home, I'm just gonna swing by, get some baby wipes for the diaper bag and then we're gonna go see if we can meet my husband for a early lunch. So I swung home, brought my son in and then grabbed some wipes, went to the bathroom and I saw that my underwear was just coated with blood. And honestly, it's kind of weird because I didn't really think anything of it at first. Just like the same thing happened with my other miscarriage in April. I didn't think anything of it because I've had my period for more than half my life at this point and it, seeing blood in your underwear isn't something that I haven't seen dozens of times before because that's just how you know you're on your period. So I saw the blood and it took me a few seconds and then I said out loud, fuck. And then I immediately felt my body temperature rise. I started sweating. I started crying because you got to understand I was 11 weeks and two days along. At that point, you feel like you are out of the woods. You feel like you can tell people about it next week and start letting everybody anticipate the birth of the baby with you. So I text my husband and while I'm texting him, seeing if he's gonna be able to leave work. I call my clinic and they put me in like a triage. Basically, they want me to come in, but they don't know if they have any availability to see me today. We do like three different iterations of being put on hold, trying to see if they can see me today. And finally, I'm sobbing in the phone because I know I'm miscarrying at this point. I'm hoping I'm not, but in you know the back of my mind, I know that this is happening again and it's gonna hurt more this time because I'm further along. We've been anticipating this baby for two months at this point and I'm gonna go home empty handed. It's gonna, it's not gonna be fruitful. So finally I tell the lady on the phone, I say, I want to be seen today because I have O negative blood. And when I was pregnant with my son, they told me, if you see any blood, you need to come in right away because it could be a sign that your body's rejecting your baby. So I told her that and she said, okay, well, we're gonna make sure you get Rogam today and I'm gonna give you a call back in 20 minutes and see if we could get you in. And I'm like, cool. My son and I are hanging out in the house. I'm pacing around. My husband gets home. He starts feeding him lunch. He starts taking care of everything I needed to do for me because I just couldn't, 
think about anything else and then they give me a call and it's probably like 12 20 at this point and they say we can see you at 1 30 at this place that's like 10 minutes away and i'm like cool see you then go there we have to bring our son with us so we load him up with blueberries and crackers and off we go and we go into my appointment and the lady is like let's let's see what's going on let's take a look she pulls the fetus i don't even know if i should call it a fetus or a baby I know it's the fetus. I had hopes that it was gonna be my baby, so I'll just call it my baby. She pulls the baby up on the screen, and the first thing that I notice is that it doesn't look any different from my eight-week scan. And I know from my baby app, my week-by-week -week baby app on my phone, I know that at 11 weeks, it's supposed to look like a baby. Its side profile is supposed to look like a baby. It's supposed to have a curved forehead, little chin, little nose, but this one still looked like an eight-week um, fetus. And the next thing I notice is that I don't see the flicker of a heartbeat. She finally says something after a couple minutes and she, and she says, yeah, I don't think I'm seeing a heartbeat. And I just say, okay. And I'm not crying or anything yet. Or actually, I think I was. I think I was crying at that point. My husband wasn't. I think I've seen him cry like three or four times in 10 years. <laughs> He's just holding my son, sitting next to me, holds my hand. She said, I'll let you get dressed. So I'm gonna step out for a little bit and then we'll go uh, talk to the doctor. And so I'm getting dressed and I, t I turn to my husband. His name is Chase and I say, that baby didn't look right. It's supposed to look like a baby and it didn't. And she comes back in and I say, do you know how long it's been dead, I guess? She said it was measuring eight weeks and three days. And I had had my eight week scan, I think at eight weeks on the dot. So, and it was measuring at exactly eight weeks that day. So it had actually um, passed away three days after that appointment. And then it took three weeks before my body started realizing that uh, something was wrong in there. And that's why it's called a missed miscarriage. Your body continues to think it's pregnant. You continue to have all the symptoms, but the baby's not growing anymore and it does need to pass. I'm sobbing at this point. She walks us down to a different room, brings me in there. She tells me she's sorry and that's that. We're only in there for a couple minutes before the doctor comes in and she first of all gives me her condolences and then she's she tells me what it is that has happened but since i read lots of pregnancy stuff online uh i i know what's happened i know what she's gonna tell me my choices are but since it's me knowing about the choices from reading them online and then being the person that she's giving those choices to feels a lot different. So she says, we can give it two weeks and see if it passes on its own, which didn't sound good to me because I want it to be over with now. I don't wanna wait two weeks. And she pauses and she says, just so you know, if and when it does start passing, it's going to be painful. You're far enough along that it's going to feel like labor contractions. And I look at my husband and I look at her and I say, well, I'm a stay at home mom and I'm w alone with my son most of the time. I don't wanna be in pain having labor contractions at home by myself with our son. Like, I don't want that to be uh, sprung on me. She says, the other thing is we can give you a medication, which some people like that option because it forces the process of passing the fetus within 12 hours of taking the medication. So your husband could stay home tomorrow and be with you. And that way you kind of know when it's going to happen. But it is also going to be painful and feel like labor contractions. I've read people's stories about it online and it sounds like it hurts worse than letting it happen naturally and it takes hours. It's not over within hours. It can take up to 12 hours to start and then from what I've read, it can take several hours after that for it to end. And I tell her I don't wanna feel like that at home and she said okay well the last thing i can offer you is something called a dnc she told me what it was and she said the procedure takes like 20 minutes it's under general anesthesia and i tell her that's what i want to do i'm concerned about cost at this point because i mean these things aren't cheap we have health insurance 
but as much as I don't want to put ourselves in the hole of medical debt, I also really don't want to have an experience of trying to pass this at home painfully. <sighs> she said she'll hook me up with the estimates department so that we can know about how much it'll cost before we go through with it, but at this point I feel like I definitely want to do that. And she said, are you sure you don't have to give us an answer right now? And I'm looking at my husband and in that moment, I just felt like it doesn't, like it feels like being stuck between a rock and a hard place because you don't want to lose your pregnancy because pregnancy is really hard, especially the first trimester. And I know that nothing could have been done at that point, but you don't want to tell them that, yes, let's just take the baby out this way or that way, because ultimately you want to keep your pregnancy. So we go home, I get a call about an hour later and they say we can get you in at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I call my mom, she takes the next day off so that she can come here and stay with our son for the morning. Nothing really much to say about that evening. Next morning, get up, head down there. Um, they get me into pre-op and I'm in my little gown and I'm in the I'm in my bed and they come do an IV and whatever. And the pre-op nurse holds my hand and she says, I know how you feel right now. I've lost four. And she was just telling me about some of her experiences. For her, it was because she had a blood clotting disorder that she didn't know about. Through testing, they figured that out and put her on a medication. Then she was finally able to have her last baby that she wanted. She was a really, really nice woman, very comforting. And I asked her about genetic testing because when you miscarry, you can get genetic testing done. And she says that she really recommends it because you can learn stuff from the fetal tissue you can learn you can learn what sex the baby was going to be you can learn what it was that ultimately caused their demise if it's something that has to do with their body and not yours or you cannot learn very much at all but she told me it'll probably be pretty expensive and i've heard that before but she's like i really recommend it anyway so my husband and i we are say we agree can you let the doctor know and she says yes yeah. Um, and then the doctor comes, she tells me what's gonna happen, tells my husband to stay in the building because the procedure only takes about 20 minutes. But then I have to um, recover for however long and then go, we'll go home. And so he gives me a kiss, he takes my stuff with him and then he goes and gets breakfast somewhere in the hospital. And then I get wheeled back by, I guess my OR nurse. She introduces herself and we get in there. They move me from my bed to the table that the procedure is going to happen on. And um, I was not scared. I wasn't scared of the procedure, but I started crying because it... Um, I just wished it wasn't happening. And it was kind of funny because the, there was some male staff in there. I don't know what he was specifically, but he kind of he looked at my face and he saw that I was just laying there looking at the ceiling crying. And I noticed all this in my peripheral and he quickly just like ducked behind. He just didn't want to deal with it at all. But the OR nurse comes back and she's telling me what's going on and she notices I'm crying and she grabs my hand and she says, you know, I've had two of these. And I said, you've had two DNCs? And she said, yeah, I've had two of these myself. And she tells me it's gonna be okay. She tells me she knows how I feel. And you know, it's not fair. I clearly want this pregnancy. And that was really nice. It was, she was really comforting too. Everybody was very sympathetic or empathetic. I always forget the difference. <laughs> And uh, actually, that was the last thing I remember. Uh, they must have injected my IV with whatever while I was talking to her because that was the last thing I remember. They were just like, eh, let's just put her out of her misery real quick. <laughs> and then the next thing I know, I can hear my husband's voice and I hear uh, another male's voice on the other side of me and they're talking to each other. It was uh, my post-op nurse and he was just telling my husband what to expect. I woke up shaking because of the anesthesia and I felt cold so they had a like an air blanket on me that was blowing hot air on my body. But I felt totally fine. I didn't feel pain. Honestly, it felt like I just woke up from a nap. I didn't even feel tired. It was it was really pleasant actually, but I was more chipper after the procedure was over with. Like for me, I felt better knowing that the ordeal was pretty much 
over with. Ultimately, I'm happy I went with a DNC because they say you can wait a couple more weeks to see if it passes on its own, but lots of the times people end up getting DNCs anyway because the tissue just won't leave on its own. And sometimes people even get two DNCs because tissue gets left in there. They told me that they sent part of the fetal tissue and some of my uterine lining to get uh, genetic testing done. It will be several weeks before we get that. And as of recording all of this, I am over a month past all of when this happened and we still haven't gotten our uh, testing back. We got confirmation that it was sent, but we haven't gotten anything about the results. And I've read that it can take up to eight weeks. So as much as we want to know what happens, it's going to take a sweet time and cost us a lot of money. Well, it does. <laughs> Afterwards, we left, we went to Dunkin' Donuts because I felt like the whole ordeal earned me a really high calorie baked good from there and a high calorie pumpkin pie latte and that's what I got. We go home, relieve my mom, and then we're just as a family just in the living room and it's, pro it's probably a couple hours past when we got home at this point and I feel another big gush and my post-op nurse had said, if you bleed it's okay i think it, he said you shouldn't be bleeding through two panty liners in an hour if you bleed that much that's too much you need to give us a call or go to the emergency room and i just told my husband i was like "Ooh, i felt a little gush and we're like "Ooh, gross <laughs> this happened while i was kneeling on the floor like holding my son or something and then i'm like i think i'm gonna go take a shower and i get up and there is a big spot of blood on the rug like a big spot, like the size of a personal pizza. And my husband goes, holy shit. And I'm like, uh, I'm gonna go upstairs and get in the shower. And I go up there and I look and I have bled completely through, not a panty liner, but a hospital like post-procedure pad, like something that you'd get after a C-section or childbirth because I have those, because I've had a C-section so that's a, it's a thick pad. It's like wearing a diaper and it's bled all through my pants and it's going down my legs. Sorry if this is too much information, but this is what happened to me. And if you're here watching DNC videos, you probably want to know this stuff. So I'm standing in the shower. My husband comes up there. I'm just standing there, just dripping blood. It was a really grotesque scene. And I'm on the phone and I'm calling the nurse line again. And she, <laughs> She probably asked me several times, probably like four or five times, have you bled through a pad? And I said several times, yes, I've bled through a C-section, like a post C-section pad, and I'm continuing to bleed. My whole shower is covered in blood. And she's like, are, do you feel pain? And I didn't feel any pain at all. She said, are you dizzy? Do you feel all right? And I was like, yeah, I feel fine. I'm just, I look like I've been hacked between my legs with an ax. Should I come in or no? She says, yeah, that sounds like too much blood. You should go to the ER. And I'm like, cool. Can't wait to just, you know, get 300K in the hole for all this crap because we live in the United States. Go there and like I change my clothes, put on a new one of those stupid pads, go down there. And on the way down there, again, I have my husband with me and we have our son because my husband's like, I should probably drive you down there. Like, what if you've lost too much blood? So we go down there, go to the ER, get checked in. And while we're sitting there, I tell my husband, I haven't bled since we were at home. Like, I haven't felt anything and I feel fine. And then we go into the little room where they get all your information before they actually take you back to the emergency department. And I'm talking to the two nurses in there and I'm like, you know, I feel kind of silly because I'm not bleeding anymore. Like, but I'm honestly not that concerned and I'm probably more concerned about the cost of it all. And they're shaking their head at me. And I ask, do you think I should get seen? Because at this point, we're just at check-in. And they're like, well, we can't tell you that. We don't think you should be seen. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's fair. And I feel kind of dumb, but I end up telling them, I think we're just going to go home and give it an hour. And if I start bleeding again, we'll come back. And they're like, okay, cool. See you then. <laughs> we go home. We keep an eye on it for few hours and nothing happens again. So I'm actually kind of happy that we left because that would have been just a nonsense bill. They probably just would have sent me home and been like, uh, you 
know, here's some more pads. Keep an eye on it. We'll see what happens. You know, we got your blood type and stuff. You were just here earlier. That was the end of all of that. It ended up being an okay evening. I will say that I was pretty bent out of shape for probably three or four days after that. I cried quite a bit. They told me to expect a lot of depressed feelings and that told me I might cry quite a bit because when you miscarry, your hormones have to come back down. So I had a crash of my hormones returning to normal, kind of like what happens when you're postpartum. I did feel pain over my loss and so did my husband. We were very distraught about that because we had built up this hope of, you know, what our next child is gonna be like. We were excited about all this. Yeah, and now here I am, I think I am about 34, 35 days post all of this now and this morning i just got my period again my doctor said that there's no reason to wait to try and conceive again once you have a period you can actually get pregnant like two weeks after a miscarriage you don't have to wait for your period but i don't know we just didn't try so we're hopeful for this cycle i don't really know what else to say we're hopeful but it's pretty clear to me now that you don't have that baby until it's in your arms. <laughs> I know that if I get pregnant again, which I'm sure I will, I know that I probably won't feel any excitement about it. And I, ha I bear the burden, being the female in the relationship that has to do all this, I bear the burden of having to go through the first trimester again. And now I know that even getting to the end of the first trimester doesn't mean that I'm gonna have this child. I know of people who have lost their babies halfway through pregnancy. Like you just don't know, things happen all the time. And we still have not gotten our genetic testing back. We wonder if a chromosome issue was the problem because we did that sneak peek early test where it can tell you the sex of your baby. It's like an at-home blood test. We did it with our son and it was accurate. So we did it with this one. I ended up having to get another kit. They sent me a new kit because the result was inconclusive with the first kit. So they sent me a new one for free, sent that one back and it was inconclusive again. So like I said, we don't have the testing results back yet, but we wonder if there was a chromosome problem that made it hard for them to see what the sex was. But I will update in the description below, once I get the results, I will let you guys know what it was that happened, if they can find anything at all. Well, that was the most depressing video I've ever made. <laughs> if you made it this far, thank you for watching. You, if you have any questions, you can leave them down below. I'll answer them if I have you know, answers for you. If you're here watching this because you are going through this, or you've gone through it before, or you know somebody going through it, um, I hope that it was helpful. I hope it never happens to us again. I think in our 10 year relationship, that was the most painful thing that we have had to weather together. I'm gonna close this out now. Again, leave your questions below if you have any. And um, thanks for watching.